Our today's topic is general amino acid metabolism. In this topic, we will also study the transamination and deamination reactions. So before starting this topic, I will tell you the general amino acid metabolism, what happens in this. These amino acids, they can be used for anabolic reactions that involves the synthesis of proteins. Number two, they can be used for synthesis of specialized products like heme, creatine, purines and primidines. These are also involved in catabolic reactions that is the breakdown of dietary proteins which are broken down to amino acids. They are also involved in transamination reactions in which one amino group of the amino acid is removed from the amino acid to produce carbon skeleton that is a keto acid and this amino group is later deaminated and excreted as urea. <coughs> Further, they can be used in the synthesis of non-essential amino acid from the carbon skeleton. They can be used in gluconeogenesis and they are used for metabolic functions like conjugation, methylation, amidation, etc. Now first I will give you the concept of catabolism of amino acids. An amino acid is broken down by enzymes into carbon skeletal plus ammonia. The carbon skeleton is used for energy purposes as fuel and it can be used as a precursor of substances like epinephrine. Ammonia as we all know is highly toxic and it can cause cerebral edema so it must be excreted immediately. So this ammonia is converted into less toxic substance by the liver that is urea and then it is excreted through the kidney into the urine. But some ammonia is also secrete, excreted by kidney as ammonium ion. This whole reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme that is known as aminotransferase or they are known as transaminases. Aminotransferase is a better word for transaminases. Both are correct. So you can say transaminases. Aminotransferases are better used. <coughs> They use pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme. This pyridoxal phosphate comes from vitamin B6. B6 is also known as pyridoxal. So please do remember this AL. This stands for aldehyde group. So aldehyde group is transferred to the keto acid by this. So we will see in the next slides. Now let's talk about ammonia. A little ammonia pool is maintained in our body. This ammonia comes from glutamic acid, from deamination reactions, from amino sugars, primidines, putrefaction of bacteria by bacteria, glutamine and asparagine. And this can further be utilized to form glutamine, asparagine and excreted as a waste product urea. Now first we will study transamination. The transamination as the word says it is the exchange of alpha amino group of one amino acid to another keto acid forming a new alpha amino acid. The amino acid is converted into keto acid and the keto acid is converted into amino acid. So amino acid 1 plus keto acid 2. Amino acid will become keto acid and this keto acid will become amino acid. To explain it further, we take one amino acid, alpha amino acid, that is donor. It reacts with the keto acid, that is recipient. 
this amino group is transferred to this keto group of this acid and this amino acid is converted into a new keto acid and <clears throat> this keto acid forms a new amino acid. This reaction is reversible reaction. In this reaction, the donor amino acid, that is the amino acid 1, becomes a new keto acid after losing its alpha amino group and the recipient keto acid that was number 2 becomes a new amino acid and after receiving the amino group, this reaction represents only an intermolecular transfer of amino group without the splitting out of ammonia. Ammonia is not liberated in this stage. Remember this. In the transamination reaction, ammonia is not formed. Yeah, ammonia formation does not take place by transamination reaction. Remember this line. Now, in almost all the cases, the amino group is accepted by alpha ketoglutarate. So, that alpha ketoglutarate is converted into glutamate that we will see in our next lectures this reaction is very common among many cells and it will happen again and again you and you will remember this reaction the enzymes catalyzing this reaction is a group that is known as amino transferases or transaminases you can call them pyridoxal phosphate acts as a coenzyme the reaction as I told you is readily reversible so that I told you that transaminases are better known to be called as amino transferases so to explain this reaction again further to clarify this reaction well, we take an amino acid that is an L amino acid L amino acids are present in our body. Human body does not contain D amino acid. Please do remember that. This ammonia group, amino group is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate. This is alpha ketoglutarate. This amino group will be transferred here. It will replace this keto group. And this forms glutamate, L glutamate. L amino acid will form L glutamate. So this amino group is transferred here. And this keto group is transferred to this amino acid to form a keto acid. This reaction is catalyzed by amino transferases. And coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate, which is, can be written as PLP. Now, what is the significance of this reaction? Why does our body go through that pain and do these complicated reactions? So we will see what happens. This is used for the synthesis of non-essential amino acids like pyruvate is synthesized from alanine. Oxaloacetate is converted, sorry, pyruvate is converted to alanine and then oxaloacetate forms aspartate or aspartic acid. Alpha ketoglutarate can form glutamate or glutamic acid. The other significance is interconversion of amino acid. This process is known as equalization. If one amino acid is high and the second amino acid is low, the amino group from one amino and the first amino acid will be transferred to the keto acid to give the amino acid number two to equalize the quantity of both amino acids in the body. This reaction is known as equalization of quantities of non-essential amino acids. Next, we come to the exceptions. Lysine, threonine and proline are not transaminated. Remember this lysine, threonine and proline are not transaminated. They follow a direct degradative pathway. We will see that later. <coughs> now clinical significance of these enzymes or 
aspartate aminotransferase AST commonly known as AST alanine aminotransferase is commonly known as ALT are induced by glucocorticoids which favor gluconeogenesis AST is increased in myocardial infarction and ALT is increased in liver diseases so we can identify a patient having a myocardial infarction when his AST is raised. ALT is also raised, but if only ALT is raised, then this is liver disease. Now we come to deamination reaction. The amino groups from many of the alpha amino acids are collected in the liver to form amino group of L-glutamate molecules. All the amino group that means they, all the amino groups are transferred to on the mostly on the alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. This glutamate group must next be removed. This amino group must be removed from glutamate to prepare it for, for excretion through kidneys at urea is formed. In hepatocytes in the liver cell. Glutamate is transported from cytosol into the mitochondria. This reaction is taking place, this amino group transamination reaction is taking place in the cytosol. Now when glutamate is formed, this glutamate is transferred into the mitochondria of the liver from cytosol. There in the cytosol, this glutamate undergoes oxidative deamination that is catalyzed by L-glutamate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is not present in the cytosol, it is only present in the mitochondria. So remember this, help glutamate dehydrogenase or you can simply say glutamate dehydrogenase. Now in mammals, this enzyme is present in the mitochondrial matrix. I have told you that it is the only enzyme that can use either NAD plus or NADP plus as the acceptor of reducing equivalence. The combined action of amino transferase in the cytosol of the liver and glutamate dehydrogenase in the mitochondria of the liver is referred as trans deamination. I repeat the combined action of amino transferase that acts in the liver and glutamate rehydrogenase that acts in the mitochondria is referred to as trans deamination. Only a few amino acids bypass this deamination, trans deamination pathway and undergo direct oxidative deamination. We will discuss them later. Now deamination can be of two types. Number one is oxidative deamination. Number two is non-oxidative deamination. Now first we will discuss oxidative deamination. So oxidative deamination, during this the transamination reaction, the amino groups of, as I told you, all almost all the amino acids are funneled into glutamate. They form glutamate. The amino group is mostly transferred on alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. The glutamate dehydrogenase reaction cannot take place in the liver cytosol. It is the final reaction which will take place in the mitochondria and it will remove the amino group of all amino acids from that glutamate. It needs NAD plus as coenzyme but NADP can also act as a coenzyme in this. This is an allosteric enzyme. Allosteric means it is regulated by something other than itself. So it is activated by ADP and it is inhibited by GTP. If ADP is present, it will be activated. This reaction will take place. But if there is more GTP, this reaction will not take place. It will be inhibited. Do remember that. Now, as I have told you, only liver mitochondria contain glutamate dehydrogenase, GDH, which deaminates glutamate to again to alpha ketoglutarate. It takes off the amino group from glutamate and again converts into alpha ketoglutarate. Ammonia is thus liberated 
which is which is then converted into urea that is less toxic and then it is transferred into the blood and then into the kidney and it is excreted through urine so all amino acids are first transaminated to glutamate and then they they are finally deaminated into the mitochondria so this process is known as trans deamination because it takes at two different places transamination takes place in cytosol while deamination takes place in mitochondria but this is a coupled reaction so it is known as trans deamination amino acids are deaminated at the rate of about of about 50 to 70 grams per day 50 to 70 grams per day amino acids are deaminated in our body now we come to non oxidative deamination dehydratase act on hydroxy amino acids to remove ammonia from the following amino acids serine is converted into pyruvate and threonine and these are then converted into alpha ketobutyrate we will study in this in threonine catabolism. Desulfhydrase cysteine, cysteine undergoes deamination and simultaneous transsulfuration to form pyruvate. Histidine, this way we will also study in catabolism of histidine, undergoes a non oxidative deamination to form uracanic acid and this reaction is catalyzed by histidase enzyme all these reaction in all these reaction oxy, oxygen is not involved not involved so they are known as non oxidative deamination reactions now apart from these reactions ammonia may also be produced in the gastrointestinal tract by bacterial putrefaction now we come to minor deamination pathways. L amino oxidase, L amino acid oxidase can act on all amino acids except hydroxy amino acids and dicarboxylic amino acid. It uses FMN as coenzyme. The peroxide form in this reaction is decomposed by catalase in the peroxisomes. Now there is another enzyme that is D amino acid oxidase this can oxidize glycine and D amino acid D amino acid where does it come from we all have L amino acids in our body human beings have and mammals have L amino acid not D amino acid these D amino acids are produced by bacteria by bacterial metabolism and so we need an enzyme for that. So this enzyme is D amino acid oxidase that can oxidize glycine and D amino acids. So it uses FAD as a coenzyme. <clears throat> Ammonia may also be formed in the body through minor reactions like oxidation of monoamines by monoamine oxidases. So now this completes our lecture for today. Next, we will discuss detoxification and disposal of ammonia. That is also very important how ammonia is disposed of from our body, how it is converted into urea. That we will we'll study in detail in the next lecture. So, hope you enjoyed my lecture and stay in touch. See you again, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.